Hello everybody and welcome back to our 3D modeling class. As I mentioned last week in the class, we will not have the uh, regular class on Tuesday evening this week uh, because I had to go to a conference. So instead, um, I'm posting up this video up, um, for you all to um, watch and, and, and study. And of course the assignments and the course materials are going to be also posted on the Blackboard as they are all, always. Um, because we have two classes, one in Sugarland and one in Victoria. So you can get the course materials and, uh, and the assignment materials from the Blackboard and start working on your assignments. Um, and basically by the end of this class, uh, we will be covering two concepts. One that we started covering last week, and um, I will um, revisit that concept of um, creating objects off of another object by making a copy of them. And we have three options of creating copies, clones, instances and uh, um, and references. Um, I'll also show you a little bit more in details about how it work, how, how the cloning and referencing and instancing and copying work and what differences uh, there are between them specifically um, in the context of applying modifications on your objects through the object modifier stack and we will cover those things. Um, the, these two concepts because they really work side by side uh, quite well with each other and um, so so then again I will, I will uh, start off with the concept of creating objects um, clones and then um, um, we will get into the details of uh, applying modifiers on your objects and what each of these modifiers do and how you can work with the modifiers as well as the sub object uh, components of your um, three-dimensional models in 3ds Max. Um, we'll be covering these concepts and then um, as a part of this you will go ahead and, and start working on the uh, chapters 10 and 11 uh, from your textbook and the assignments are going to be also as I said posted on the blackboard and you can watch them um, or you can you can download them and start working on your assignments um, after you finish um, the two chapters and also watching this video um, to see how you can work with uh, the concepts of uh, modifier stack. I will go into some details that's not probably directly from your textbook. I consolidated the concepts of modifier stack in the uh, 3ds Max workflow um, into a couple of slides for you all so that you can see how these modifications are applied and how the stack modifier is going to basically work with your object primitives um, to um, create the final lock of your object. So I hope that you do watch this video um, um, to completion. It's about a, an hour um, video and, um, and hopefully this will help you a lot with understanding what's going on um, behind the scenes of making modifications on your objects. Okay, um, to start up uh, with uh, the first objective or the, or the first topic that we'll study today, we'll talk about objects that you may want to create and then uh, make copies of them in a scene, such as, for example, a row of columns in front of a building, the legs of a chair, or, or things that you have multiple um, copies of the same object in a scene and you don't necessarily want to um, recreate the entire model. Um, there are uh, these these objects are called clones. Basically, they are copies of models um, that you create. In order to make a copy of a model, let's say that you created a leg for uh, of a chair, and you want to copy it, you could cl left click on the object and select it, and then um, by enabling the select and move um, gizmo, and then um, uh, while controlling the shift button, uh, you could. Uh, drag the object and uh, transform it or translate it and this way you will uh, open the cloning dialog. Uh, there will be three objects in the clone uh, option dialog box that, sh that you see and uh, these are copy, um, uh, instance and reference and then you can choose how many number of copies you want to create and then you can give them names. The copy clone is a clone that has no relationship with the original object or the master object. That is, if you apply a transformation or a modifier on the object's parameters, on each of these object's parameters, the other object will not be affected. Um, the second uh, type of clone object that you can create are called instances. An instance object is a clone that's always in a two-way relationship with the original object. 
That is, if you apply a parametric uh, change on each of the objects, the other one will change. If also you apply a modifier on an object, the other object will also change, uh, whether you apply it on the instance or on the master object. And this is useful when you want to create objects and apply modifications and you want to, to keep multiple copies mo or multiple instance of that modified object, such as the legs of a chair uh, or a, uh, a column of, uh, a row of uh, uh, columns in front of a building, as I mentioned earlier. In this case, you make an object and you make copies of it and then you make changes to one of these objects, the other ones will change accordingly. So um, this saves a lot of time. The third kind of object is a reference object. A reference object is a specialized type of instance object and it is basically in one way or two way relationship with the original object, which is also called the master object. Depending on where in stack you apply uh, the modifier on the instance object, the original object may or may not change. And we'll see that how it actually works in a quick tutorial that I'll just show you in a few seconds. Essentially, uh, when you're looking at the modifier list or the modifier stack, the objects or the modifiers that are applied on both the master object and its instances and references will be shown in boldface and uh, the ones that will be only applied on the reference object will be shown in just a regular type uh, face. Um, and so let's go to the 3ds Max and I will show you how we actually can uh, uh, make copies, instances, and references from objects and how we can make modifications and basically apply multiple modifications or just one way modification on just the instance in, in the ref on the reference object without changing the uh, master object. Okay, here we are in the uh, 3ds uh, Max. I maximized the perspective viewport um, just to show you the three-dimensional um, view of the objects that I will create. And I'll uh, show you here how the notions of uh, clone copies, clone instances, and clone references uh, work and how the modifiers will be applied on them. So first let's start by making a box. And so you go, you go to the object, the geometry, and from the standard primitives, I'll choose a uh, box primitive, and then I'll make a box um, just like that. And then um, I'd make this name to be the box master. Okay, so this is by box, and I can modify its um, properties by left clicking and dragging on length, width, uh, height, and, uh, and other components of this object. So um, let's make the height segments 10 and length and width, seg width segments um, 1. So this is my um, master object that I created. And now I want to make a copy of this object. If I move the left button and translate this object along x direction, and while holding the shift down, I will create a copy of this object, and then I can choose object copy, and then call this object box copy. Notice that these objects are different. Essentially, if I make any changes to the height of this uh, copied object, nothing t happens to the original object. Uh, same with the number of segments in the object. If I change them essentially from 10 to any uh, other types. Also, I can change the color of this object um, and nothing will happen to my original object. Uh, it could have different materials and stuff like that. And of course, when I'm transforming, translating this object or moving this object along x and y direction, nothing will happen to the original object. And same with uh, if I do that with the uh, master object, it won't apply on the original object. Now, let's make a uh, an instance of the original object. I'm holding the shift button down and left click and drag um, along the x direction and I make an instance and I call this uh, box instance. Now notice if I change the height of this instance object the original object will also change. If I change the height of the original object the uh, instance object will also 
change. That is the properties that are applied to um, the um, prop object properties itself. If I change the color of this, uh, uh, the instance object, or essentially change the um, material of the instance object, that will not apply to the original object. And same is true if I change the color of the original object, it will not be applied to the instance object. If I um, transform or move uh, the original object um, along any axis, or even the instance object, um, nothing will apply to the original object either. This is the idea of branching. Uh, what happens here, you see, when I created the object, and I created a copy uh, of this object, uh, nothing was shared. Essentially, the object had properties such as width, height, it had a size, shape, number of segments and stuff like that. These are the properties, the, the, the object parameters. And then this, each object had their own properties, such as colors. And each object had their own transformations, that is their location, orientation, and scale in the world. And none of those were shared. So the object uh, properties, object parameters, and object transforms were not shared. And same is true with modifiers for objects and copies. For objects and instances, as you notice here, their properties, their colors, their uh, materials uh, are not shared. Their location and orientations, or essentially their tra transforms, are not shared. But their parameters are shared. That is, if I change the height of each object, the instance or the master, um, the other one will change. So when you look at this pipeline of object creation in 3ds Max, you will notice that in 3ds Max, between objects and copies, nothing is shared. But between objects and instances, their object parameters are shared, but their transforms and their um, properties are independent. How about modifiers? And how about the modifier stack? If I apply a modifier, such as a um, taper modifier, on the instance, so I can click on the modifier stack and I apply a taper modifier on, on the instance object, as you see here, and I change the amount of mod, uh, taper, you'll see that the instance object's modifier applies also on the master object. But that does not apply on the copy object. That is, if I go on the copy object and then I apply a bend modifier and I bend the copy object, the master object will not change. Now let's delete the bend modifier. And then let's apply a taper modifier or a bend modifier to the master object. So let's go to modifiers and go to pra parametric deformers and then click on bend. Now if I apply the bend modifier on the master object and I change the bend value, you see the bend also applies on the uh, instance object but does not apply on the copied object. Okay, so so this essentially would show us that there are several uh, parts that are essential in creation of objects in the 3ds Max um, uh, pipeline or 3D graphics pipeline. And for the objects and their clone copies, or the ones that are just copied, uh, nothing is shared. Object have different prop, uh, uh, object parameters, they have their own modifier stack, and they have their own transforms, and they have their own properties, such as materials, colors, and things of that nature. Now, having different properties uh, uh, for different objects makes sense, because if, if you want to have objects having different materials, you would have to be able to assign different materials to different objects, even though you copied them. And the transforms being different also allow us to place objects 
uh, on different places and areas because transforms are essentially rotations, translations, and scales. And, uh, and in this sense, um, they are um, in individual to objects instances and objects copies, and they're not shared. However, for objects and object instances, you want to be able to apply the same transformation on objects and their instances, whereas you don't want to apply the same um, modifiers to objects and their clones or copies. So modifier stack is shared between the objects and instances, and it's not shared between objects and their uh, clone copies. Object parameters, such as their sizes, their radiuses, their heights, are also shared uh, between objects and their instances. Now, in this sense, you can apply transformations on both objects and instances, and each one would affect uh, the other one. And these transformations are modifiers, modification transformations, or parametric transformations. Now, what happens if you wanted to apply a modifier just to um, a copy of the object, but not to the object itself? So for example, for instance, how about if I wanted to uh, apply a noise modifier to the objects and their copies? Now, let's apply another modifier to the instance, and let's uh, apply a twist modifier to the instance, and let's increase the angle of the twist to 180 degrees. And here's my um, twist modifier, and I have the bend modifier. Um, let's make the bend modifier something like this. So as you see, the bend and the twist modifier are applied on both instances and copies and, and objects. Now if I uh, hold the shift and make another copy of this master object and make it a reference object, and let's call this the reference object. You see that I can now change the parameters of this reference object or the box here and this also changes both the uh, reference, the instance, and the master. And um, if I apply a um, modifier just to the reference, let's apply a noise modifier just to the reference object and the noise modifier applied to the reference object would have to be above this solid gray line just to apply to the reference object and the twist and bend below this solid line are applied on all the three objects the master object, the instance object, and the reference object. So this is good um, because now I can apply a noise value, let's say with the value of 10 along x and y and the strength of 5 and this way you notice that this noise will be applied to um, the reference object not to the instance and to the master object. Now, something interesting happens uh, when I apply the noise modifier on top of the bend modifier. Notice if I choose the bend modifier and I change the angle of the bend, you see that the polygons on the reference object also change. And this would be pretty, pretty bad if, uh, if this is a part of an animation. Let's just make it an animation that starts from an, a bend angle of 0 to a bend angle of minus 60 degrees and let's see what happens. So if I move the um, bend angle to 0 and I click on Auto key and then I go to the end of the animation, let's go to the middle of the animation and let's make the angle of bend to become minus 60 and then let's go to the end of the animation and bring it back to zero. And let's run this animation and see what happens. As you see, the object bends back and forth, and the surface polygons uh, change, which is a pretty bad uh, side effect. And we don't uh, we don't like this to happen. So how could we get rid of this problem? 
uh, we could do this by essentially moving the bend modifier on top of the noise modifier. That is, we want to apply the noise modifier before the bend modifier. How could we do this? Now, we could go to the reference object and basically bring the bend on top and the noise at the bottom and here um, the animation works properly. It face first deforms the object and then bends the object. But the problem is that now that I put the noise modifier below the bend modifier under the solid line, these two modifiers are shared between the reference object and all the instances and the master object. So this also affects those objects too. So one quick remedy to this is essentially to move the uh, both the noise modifier and the bend modifier above the solid line and just apply them to the, um, the reference object. And so as you notice here, the object, if I run the animation, the object deforms, bend, uh, no, I mean uh, twists first, then the noise applies, and then the bend applies on top of it. And so in this case, you would see that um, the object's polygons would not change because noise first applies before any other parameters change. And uh, th the problem with this is that now the bend modifier and the noise modifier are not shared between the object and its instances and the references. And the instances and references are uh, n now not bent. Uh, actually, the instance and the, sh and the object are not bent. So this is a quick remedy for this. Now, if I wanted to also apply the bend object, bend modifier on the um, reference uh, and uh, the instance and the master object, I could I could do that essentially by applying instance modifiers, and I will we'll talk about the instance modifiers um, next. But first, I need to talk about the 3ds Max data flow, the things that I just sh I, I just talked about here on the 3ds Max itself. I would like to uh, show you actually in a di diagram, and and then you can make more sense of how these deformations and modifications and transformations are applied on the pipeline. All right, now that you saw how uh, the objects essentially uh, can be modified and, 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 and essentially uh, cloned, um, it's again a good idea to go back and look at the 3ds Max data flow and see how you can actually um, make objects and then make copies of these objects and how, how it, the process uh, actually works. If you look at and, and remember from the previous chapters when we were talking about the process of applying m modifiers on your objects, we said that the modifier basically it uses a modifier stack and it's basically um, uh, careless about when each modifier is created when you were creating the object and, and modifications on it, but it actually looks at where the modifiers are placed in the modifier stack. So if you remember from last week, if we apply the bend and, and then in a taper on top of uh, bend, uh, or when we apply the taper first and bend next, uh, the uh, result of the object would, or would look differently because the, mo the, the 3ds Max starts from the bottom and goes all the way uh, to the top of the uh, modifier uh, stack and applies one modifier after the, after the next. But the same process of applying one thing after the other uh, is through for the entire process of creating a three-dimensional object. And this is how it actually works. The pipeline takes from the beginning, takes the object parameters, like the, the, kind, of this, the kind of object that you want to create, a sphere, a cylinder, and the other kinds of objects, and its parameters. For example, the length, um, the width and height, and, and um, length of a uh, box, or the radius of a sphere, and so on and so forth. So if it applies those parameters first on the object. Then it looks to see if there is any modifier in the modifier stack, and then it applies the modifiers from the bottom of the modifier stack all the way to the top. And then it applies the transformations. And the transforms are the three transformations of scaling, 
um, uh, translating or moving the object in the 3D environment and rotating the object. And it applies these transformations pretty much in this, in this order. First, it applies the scale, then it applies the movement or the translation transform, and finally, it ro rotates the object. And finally, it applies the properties to the object, such as the uh, textures or maps or uh, materials and the lighting and uh, uh, the color, colors of the lights and, and stuff like that. So this is the pipeline of 3ds Max um, data flow. And what happens when you create a clone of the object, or basically you hold shift and move the object and create an, an a copy of the object, and you assign it as a clone uh, a copy, then um, that means that this pipeline for the two objects are completely created separately. That means that your objects do not share each other's parameters, do not share each other's modifier stack, and of course they never share their transforms and the properties, regardless of if they're a clone or they're an instance or they're a uh, reference. So basically um, the copied object which is not an instance or reference, do not share anything. And that is why when I m was changing um, the size and the length and height of um, the copied object, it wouldn't change anything on the, on the master object. Same when I was changing the colors or when I was uh, moving the object around and when I was applying modifiers in the modifier stack, it wouldn't share anything. But when you're talking about um, instanced uh, objects, you see that the objects and instances share each other's parameters and each other's modifier stack, but they do not share the transforms and the properties. The reason it's actually a good thing for the objects not to share the properties and not to share the transforms, because if they don't share the properties, then you can make one object, and then you can make many instances of this object, and you can give different uh, different materials to their ob to, to the different instances, and that would be a good thing. Same with transforms in that you could make an object and then you could make instances of this object and move these instances around in the world, rotate them and uh, scale them, and not change uh, the location and the scale and the orientation of your original objects, okay? But another thing that's important is that sometimes you want to make an object and you want to make modifications to each, this object and then you want to make copies of this object and you want to keep these modifications. The instance objects sh uh, share the modifiers and the modifier stack of their parent object. That is when you make an object and then you create an instance of that object and then you make modifications on either the object or the parent, the modifications would apply to both and that's how you can create um, same objects with the same looks and then copy them over and over and over again. And also they share object parameters. So if you shrink one of the objects, either an instance or a master object, um, the other one would also change because the parameters and the modifier stack are shared in the objects and instances, but the transform and properties are not shared. The objects and references also share modifier stack of the parent object and the parent object's properties, but the reference objects can also have their own modifier stack. And that was uh, the modifier that I showed you when I was uh, putting the modifiers just for the reference and that they would look, uh, uh, you know, just uh, original font size and the modifier stack that was shared would look in bold face. And that way you can actually make an object, make modifications to it, make a reference for it, and then make more modifications to the reference without worrying about making changes to your master object or the original object. Um, now, there is an, um, um, a special kind of modifier that's called the X-form or transform modifier that you could use to transform um, and share transformations between the master object and the original object. And, um, and finally, there is another kind of modifier that's called an instance modifier that you could apply on two different objects and share these modifications. Remember from the object that I was creating, I wanted to apply noise and bend on the object that was referenced. Um, and in order to keep the object lock, I had to take the bend out of the shared modifier stack, and that way my original object was not bent. And if I bend the original object, it would apply an extra bend on the 
uh, reference object and that wouldn't work. Uh, the way to deal with this kind of problems is through the instance modifiers. You can make two objects or you can make an object and, and an, uh, a reference for it and then you can make modifications to one object and then copy that modifier to the other one and this would basically copy an instance of the modifier to the second object. Basically you can paste an instance modifier and I'll show you uh, next how it works. And that way you can share some instance modifiers between two different objects and make them change accordingly. So let's see how the instance modifiers uh, actually uh, work in 3ds Max. Okay, so, so let's see how the instance modifiers actually work here. So I have an object like this box and what I want to do is that I want to make an object that uh, I want this original object to be twisted and bent and then I want the um, object that I want uh, to basically be built on this this original object or the master object to have a unique noise on it. So what I could do is that I could use instance modifiers that would apply to th two objects and then I could make a unique modifier just on one of the two objects. So the idea here is to create a an object like this and then make a copy of this object. So uh, hold down the shift key and then uh, drag your left click mouse and then create an object and make this object uh, box copy. Now remember these two objects don't share anything in um, in general so if you change one of the two objects the other one does not change and if you apply modifiers to one the other one will not be applied. So you could create a bend modifier on this object on the master object so let's make a bend modifier on the master object and then let's drag the angle of this bent modifiers to about 45 degrees and um, we wanted the, this object also to have a twist object so what you could do is that you could apply and copy this bend modifier by right clicking on it and copying on it and then click on the second object and then click on box and then paste instance. This way an instance of this modifier will be applied on the two objects and as you see in both objects the bend modifier would look differently uh, or actually it looks in bold uh, in italic or italicized shape. So this way if you change one of the modifiers parameters in one object the other one would change. Notice these are two different objects and if I still go to the box object and change the height of this object it would not change or affect the other object okay because there are two different ones one is just a copy clone uh, but the only thing they share is the bend modifier let's say that this you wanted to apply a twist object on both of these objects let's click on the copy object and then let's click on box uh, because I want to add a modifier on top of box not on top of bend so here I could add a twist parameter or a twist modifier and then I could increase the angle of twist for this object and so here's how it actually looks like and notice if I change the twist nothing happens on the other object so what I could do is that now I could make a copy of this modifier I created and uh, make it into an instance on the other object so I can click on box and click on paste instance so you see on top of the box there is an instance of twist object that is twist modifier that is applied so if I move the parameters or change the parameters of one the other one does not get affected and finally I can click on the bend modifier on the object that I want noise to be applied on and I can apply a unique noise modifier on top of it so click on noise and now you can change the parameters of the noise here or actually make it smaller let's make it 10 and the um, noise will be applied on just the original object not um, or, or one of the objects and not on the other one so the two are sharing essentially uh, these parameters this way um, basically they share instance parameters now I can make an animation here of these two objects and that would be essentially really useful and the, uh, because now the noise is applied on top of the bend modifier or actually I could drag the noise modifier down 
af before the bend, and this way um, I won't have the problem that I was discussing earlier. If noise was on top of the bend and you were uh, uh, animating the bend parameters, uh, the noise would affect uh, the polygons on the surface. So let's see how it works. If the noise is on top of the bend modifier here, which is an instance modifier, uh, and I animate the bend parameters, so let's click on the auto key and let's make the bend parameter 0 at frame 0 and let's make the bend parameter angle 50 at frame 50 which is the middle and let's go back to 0 which is the last frame and if I animate this animation you see the sh look of the um, polygons on the surface of uh, this object change. Now all I need to do is to make the noise modifier apply before bend modifier and that way um, the animation would go much much more smoothly as you can see here. And so I can now change the um, amount of bend modifier in, um, in the instance modifier here and um, so essentially, it would change the amount of band on the two objects. So at this auto key, at the time 0, it's 0, 180, and back to 0, and run the animation. So this way, I have um, two modifiers that are instanced, the twist and bend, and I have the um, noise modifier that is unique to just one object, and, um, and this is the animation that looks pretty smoothly. Okay, now that we talked about um, the data flow uh, in object creation and modification in 3ds Max, uh, we, we saw that um, transforms are applied right after the object uh, parameters or creation parameters such as width, height, number of segments and stuff like that are applied and they are not shared within objects that share the modifier stack. So this creates a little bit of difficulty especially when you are dealing with lots of instanced objects and you want to modify and animate them uh, in that let's say that you have a, uh, a scenario that you have uh, um, a set of let's say um, objects that look completely alike and then you have a, a lot of them and then you want to move them around in a scene and animate them um, like um, uh, a row of soldiers essentially um, marching um, because movement um, also scale and rotation is a transform the objects, although instanced and share geometry, they don't share their transforms. And if you want to make an animation, you would have to m move everybody at the same time. Um, and so this m creates a bit of a problem. And also, when you're dealing with non-uniform uh, uh, scale, um, that would also pose um, a little bit of difficulty, especially when you talk about animation, keyframe animation, you'll see how that essentially works and, and, and poses what kinds of difficulties. And to uh, uh, address these issues, uh, a special type of uh, uh, modifier is created that is called the XForm modifier, or it which stands for transform modifier. And this m kinds of modifier has a gizmo and it's and the transformation is applied at sub object level on its gizmo and when it uh, when it is applied it essentially uh, as a modifier but instead of uh, uh, changing the geometry of your object like bend and taper um, modifiers it would change the location of your object orientation of your object and the scale of the object so uh, what you could do is that you could apply this modifier in the modifier stack and this way by changing the order of modifications that you want to do for example if you have a scale modifier on top of a uh, rotation modifier which is an X form modifier then uh, uh, your object first gets rotated and it gets scaled which you cannot get from the transform um, uh, uh, or transformations of the object in the pipeline and also if you have instance objects uh, you could apply this X for uh, X-form modifiers, essentially transform modifiers on the modifier stack of either the master object or 
um, any of its instances, and it would automatically apply to all of the instances of the same master object. A and this way, you could create that animation of marching, a row of marching uh, soldiers, essentially, um, and um, through the expert uh, modification. And we'll show you in a little bit how it actually works. So notice that this also transformation applies on the gizmo of the transform modifier rather than the gizmo of your object. So if you get out of the sub-object level, you see that the uh, pivot point of your object still stays the same. The other idea that I want to talk about is collapsing the modifier stack. When you uh, put modifiers on top of modifiers on top of modifiers in a stack, especially when you have lots of complex objects, all of these modifications has to have to stay in the uh, CPU memory, and the CPU would have to perform these modifications on your objects. Or essentially, it has to maintain a, um, a relevant information from these modifications in the, in, or the modifiers in the stack. That poses a lot of challenges on the CPU and the memory requirement of your objects. So if you keep all these modifications on your objects, um, you have a um, reason to do so because at this point, all your objects and the modifications are in the form of parametric uh, equations and in a parametric form in the memory of the computer, and you can change the parameters even all the way down to the creation parameters of your objects, such as the number of segments or um, width and height of your objects automatically, and it would propagate through the modifi modifier stack, and it would um, uh, it, it work with the size, the look of the uh, finalized object. However, you could right-click on the object and from the quad menu uh, choose convert to mesh or convert to uh, editable poly um, to collapse the modifier stack. In this way, when you collapse your modifier stack by converting your object to editable mesh or ed editable poly, what happens is that all of the modifiers that are applied to create the final look of the object will be calculated and then will be burned on the surface of the final object creating vertices meshes, surfaces, and polygons on your object and give you a finalized product of the object. And what you could do at that point is that you could edit this object by m manipulating its vertices, its edges, and its surfaces, and its polygons, essentially, to create more complex objects. The advantage of this collapsing modifier in, uh, stack is that you burn your modifications on your object, you get the um, ability to modify and manipulate your object physically, um, but what you will lose is the fact that then you cannot uh, perform any changes to the creation parameters or essentially to the parametric uh, form of your object, such as the height of the object essentially as, an, as a whole or the um, uh, length of uh, the, or the number of segments and stuff like that. Um, but on the other hand, you get gain the ability to manipulate your objects in a sub-object level, as I said, working with the matrices, vertices, moving the vertices around, welding vertices and stuff like that, and working with edges and things like that. Later on today, we'll see how we can actually use this um, editable poly and editable meshes, which are two different kinds of objects, to create more complex objects. Uh, for, for this reason, it is crucially important to uh, know when you're pretty much done with the final look of your parametric object and you want to you want to basically collapse the modifier and make the final object um, and another idea to uh, also um, know about is that you don't have to collapse the entire modifier stack you could right click on one of the modifiers in the stack and um, uh, basically collapse um, right when you right click the um, modifier um, the, the pop-up menu opens, and then you can click on Collapse 2 and collapse your modifiers uh, stack up to that modifier, from the bottom of the stack all the way up to and including the modifier you right-clicked on. And all of the modifiers that are above will still stay the same, and so you could still use those modifiers to change the look of your object. So let's go to the uh, um, 3ds Max, and let's see, uh, first start with the X4 modifier, and then I'll talk about collapsing the modifier and how you can create uh, new objects. So here is the 3ds Max and I have this object essentially here. And so um, it has, uh, I already have the X forms. Okay, let me remove all of these X form modifiers. So I have the object essentially. So here, so here's the object and I'll make an instance of this object and this would be an instance, and I call this um, box instance. 
let's make another instance okay so I have a box object a box max master box instance and box instance one and as you see bend and twist are already applied to this now if I move one of these objects essentially you see that nothing happens to the other object so this way if I wanted to make an animation and I wanted these objects to essentially move along this way and along the way that they're moving I want them to kind of rotate then I would have to for each keyframe I would have to move all of them align them and rotate them and, and perform this operation over and over again so um, I don't want to do that, so I will go and I will use a, a, a XFIRM um, or, or transform operation and I move the gizmo and rotate the gizmo of that XFIRM operation um, in my keyframe animation. So let's click on the auto key and so at the first frame, actually let's first uh, add the transforms. So let's go on the transform which is the XFIRM operation and let's add two XForm um, transforms here. So the first XForm transform on its gizmo, I apply a uh, rotation, and then on the second transform on its gizmo, I apply the translation to move all the objects. So let's go to the frame number 100 in the keyframe, in the auto key animation, and at the frame 100, let's assume that I want to transform all these objects all the way down here. And notice when I do this movement, all of the objects essentially transform. And they're, uh, and when I go at the, um, when, when I go out of the sub-object level, you see the uh, gizmo of my, um, um, or, or the pivot point of the objects stayed, uh, stayed the same. So let's, um, um, move back everybody at the beginning and for the first transform I want everybody to rotate along on the X direction so I uh, rotate I click on the select and rotate and I lo rotate all these objects essentially 90 degrees on their gizmos so that is the first X form transform that I applied in this animation now in the next uh, um, transform I want to move all these objects along the way to the hundred um, frame or to the end of this frame and so if I go out of my um, sub object uh, my, uh, my keyframe animation and I run the animation as you see all these objects essentially transform and one reason that I needed to put the rotation and the translation uh, differently is that um, when you do um, rotation after the translation then the and, and this is only applied on the gizmo of these objects um, you are translating your uh, objects uh, and the rotation would apply around the pivot point of the object on the gizmo of this um, uh, these objects so that would give you a different kind of animation so um, for this particular animation I needed to have my um, rotation transform before the um, uh, the translation transform or the movement transform okay so here's how it, you actually can use transformations essentially to apply one transform on multiple uh, instances of one object okay now when you're pretty sure with the final look of your objects and let's go out of the um, sub-object uh, level and so as you see the uh, translate the, the pivot point of the X form is essentially uh, different but for your objects your pivot points is, are essentially um, they, they won't change and they stay the same so at what one point in time you might be um, thinking of essentially Ha uh, wanting to collapse your um, modifiers so what you could do is that you could right click select an object right click on it and select convert to editable poly or editable meshes so if, let's say click on the editable mesh then my object will become an edible editable actually an editable poly 
and here's how it looks like. Then you, I can make manipulations to its um, sub-object levels. As you see here, I can work with its vertices, with its edges, uh, uh, polygons, borders, and, and elements. So for example, I could pick one vertex, for example, and translate this vertex a little bit um, uh, to the left. Or I could click on a um, polygon, and then I click on the surface, and then I could extrude this polygon or change the polygon shape. And I will, we, we will see how we can work with editable poly and editable meshes a little, a little bit later. Or you could choose one object, um, essentially, and from one object you could transform uh, or collapse uh, up to a particular um, um, level in your object. So at this point, if I right-click on the Bend modifier and click Collapse to, um, then it would ask me if I would like to collapse to, and then I would uh, click on yes, and so now I have my editable mesh, which is this object, and I could again work with its um, different um, sub-object levels, and um, um, and I still have my transforms essentially, or my other uh, transformations that are applied. Um, on the upper levels of my um, my stack, whereas uh, this object still essentially, um, actually they were instanced. So when I moved, changed one into an editable object, then the other one also um, gets applied. All right. Now that you worked with me on the um, concepts of working with your modifier stack and uh, making your objects based off of a, a basic 3D primitive either an extended primitive or a simple primitive, um, how we can make more complex shapes out of very basic 3D objects that you've got. So from this point, I would like you to go and start working on your assignments and, um, and submit them by the end of next week, or, or rather by the class time next week on Tuesday. And then uh, we will start working building 3D models from 2D shapes and 2D primitives. Um, in our next unit, and then we'll see what kind of modifiers or modifications we can apply on 2D shapes to make them into 3D objects. Well, that is it but, um, uh, as far as I have for this week's content, and I hope that you enjoy working on this week's assignments. Thank you.